people now see education as a legitimate area in which to make profit. And I think that it's in line with sort of neoliberal policies that are happening all over the world where people see everything as a source of profit. I'm the CEO of Kiro Holdings, a company that provides for-profit school education in South Africa. The phenomenon private school education was well renowned amongst our English parent society over the past 30 years. But ironically, there weren't many Afrikaans schools. So the moment Kiro opened this market in 1998, suddenly an awareness became apparent in the Afrikaans parent society. We opened a brand new market. So Kiro Holdings is literally the only group in South Africa that provides Afrikaans private school education for the Afrikaans society. Wie kan nog nog my paar goede noem? Ons het vir Ra, ons het vir Osiris, wie kan my nog een god noem? Wie nog het gaat in Milan? Isis. Kiro Holdings currently has 12 campuses operational in South Africa and our business target is to reach a total of 40 Kiro campuses by 2020, accommodating 45,000 learners, ranging from pre-primary school to grade 12. And uh, in terms of uh, business aims, that would give us a profit after tax of approximately 450 million South African rands. We are going to concentrate on the negative shapes today. I've been teaching since uh, 1995 and um, I've been at Kiro for this is my fourth year so I've been around the block a few years. The Kiro school is a far more I would say driven and an academically driven school. Performance is very much a, a strong criteria here you know you you've got lots of stakeholders at play um, you've got shareholders who are in, interested in the school's growth and performance, obviously the parents, and of course your pupils, which are your primary business. We have to perform and put on a great show, not only for our parents, not only for the sake of our children, but for our shareholders as well. And there's a real push-me-pull-you situation. Feather, feather lines. Initially, we started with a bank loan from a local bank. And then at a certain stage, the IFC approached us. It was a lady in charge of the funding of private schools and she acts on behalf of the, the World Bank. Now, bear in mind, the IFC played a huge role in Brazilian society where they funded private schools. So when they approached us, they already understood this private school commodity as a trade. So we obtained a loan of about 70 million South African rands from the IFC. Straight after we signed the loan agreement with the IFC, along came PSG, a South African financial institution. They then purchased 50%, later they opted to 76%. So bearing in mind that we are also now a listed company, we've got enough cash. So technically, we don't need to accept the funds of the IFC, but we've got a very good relationship with them. And we've got that signed loan transaction, but we haven't used it yet. A notion of for-profit school, it's a, it's a misnomer in a country like South Africa, because education, it's a, it's, it's a public good. It's not a commodity which you can actually, like you sell Kellogg's, um, products or some motor car, whatever. It's a public good. It, it improves the, 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 the standard of living of a population. So our government should not even really, really be what they should be worried about improving public education so that the majority of South Africans have better chances of coming out of underdevelopment and poverty. The quality of education, even by African standards, is relatively poor. And so there's a desperation on the part of parents who more and more see the gateway to opportunity to success as being through the doors of education. That, that, that is becoming understood. It's, it's education that decides your life chances, that decides where you're going to end up, whether my child's going to support me. And it's really a, a sense of alienation from the public school system that's creating the customers for, for, the, for the private schools. Given the huge challenges we face in South African education, 
given the resource constraints. If there's World Bank funding available for education in this country, then it is the responsibility of both the South African government and the World Bank to direct those resources to where we will address education inequity, where we will address the complete wastage of talent. Wonderful young people in public schools that are under-resourced, not getting an education that empowers them to be able to contribute to the development of this country. For World Bank resource, with the approval of our government, to be given to a private institution that's operating for profit with a particular focus on a particular language group and a particular racial group seems completely antithetical to the goals of our government and the work that the World Bank should be doing. What words do I use to describe commonalities? Private school education encourages a sense of elitism in, in society. Coexistence is the best way of dealing with problems in South Africa. Yes, people must excel, we must ask, encourage people to perform better, but private education is not helping the, pro, the program of building cohesion and unity in South Africa. I think the fact that young people go to school so separately and have such different youth experiences, um, such different growing up experiences, such different educational experiences, they come out of school are so differently able to engage confidently in the modern world has the most debilitating effect on citizenship, um, the most debilitating effect on the possibility of overcoming our history. And that will be driven by the attempts to replace public schools for the middle class with private schools. To resolve these huge problems, uh, we need the participation of everybody. Uh, government can't resolve all the problems on its own, especially not in education, because education is about government and its people. So we need everybody to participate in the solution. But if you have a system of private education, people who have the resources and the expertise leave the state system, it may not be the top 5%, it would certainly be the top 15 or 20%. Uh, but that's what makes it more dangerous, in fact. One could argue that private schooling wouldn't be so bad if it was extremely expensive, so that only a small percentage could go. But given the fact that now a larger percentage can go, makes it far more difficult. Because if you take the middle classes out of the state system, what are you left with? The poorest of the poor. So it makes it more dangerous. And I think that that's the issue that we should be discussing. If there's huge investment of private families, private community funds into private education, it's in fact drawing away resource from growing public education. And public education is, in the end, the single ingredient that can provide, in a society as divided as ours, a starting point that's equitable to build our democracy, to build the economy. People also ask us whether the relationship between a private school company and our government is good. Now, as a matter of fact, it's excellent for every school that Kiro Holdings can construct, we save the state approximately 40 million rand for a phase one and a running cost of about 25 to 30 million per year. Now, the state can then use that money to address all the backlogs in the less privileged areas. So it definitely has a, a positive effect on the state to address poverty and to uplift education in the state sector. The World Bank uh, creates the impression that its support for these private companies that are starting up in South Africa is for the common good. Uh, the argument that I've been making all the time is that it's not for the common good, it's for the benefit of a small minority. And in fact, that creating that minority impoverishes the public sector. I don't think that uh, creating a small elite full of resources uh, at this point in time is going to assist us in the development uh, 
of the country. After all, that's what South Africa has been about for the last 300 years. A small elite uh, with all the privileges and so on and the best education in the world. And what have we got? We've had apartheid and oppression uh, from this elite. The argument that elites are going to assist to develop the, uh, any country is a complete misnomer. It's just not going to happen. Uh, when you educate an elite, what they do is to look after themselves and not worry about the poor at all. And South Africa is the classic example of that in world history.